Hi everybody, so this video is going to go over uh, the Unit 5 quiz review. We're going to talk about all of the different ways of solving systems of linear equations uh, with graphing, with the substitution method, with the elimination method, and then I'm also going to show you a small hack that you could use uh, when it comes to multiple choice algebra. So looking at our first problem here, um, between the different methods that we know, uh, you should see that this is going to be a system where you are going to want to use the substitution method. Anytime you see uh, a single variable on one side of the equation, like here we have y, uh, that is going to tell you that you are going to want to use the substitution method. So this first equation here says that y is equal to x plus 4. So that means in the second equation where it says y, we could substitute x plus 4. So we're going to rewrite the second equation, but instead of y, we're going to write x plus 4. So x plus 4 equals 6x plus 14. And now we could use algebra to solve. And once we get to just one single variable, that's when we could just use algebra to solve. You can't solve an equation if it has two different variables in it. But now we've substituted the y with x plus 4, so now we just have one variable. So here is how we solve. First of all, you can't have uh, variables on both sides of the equal sign, so we need to get one of them. You're always going to want to get rid of the lower one. Uh, so we have 1x here, 6x here. 1 is lower than 6, so let's get rid of this one. Since it's a positive x, we're going to get rid of it by subtracting x. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So here, these x's will cancel out, leaving us a 4 on the left side. 6x minus x is... 5x plus 14. We didn't do anything with this plus 14, so it just stays there. Now we can get rid of the plus 14 by subtracting 14 from both sides. Uh, 4 minus 14 is negative 10. And the 14s canceled out on this side, leaving us just 5x. And then to solve, we need to divide both sides by 5. Since this is 5 times x, we use the opposite operation, which is division. Divide both sides by 5. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Here the 5s cancel out, just leaving our x. So now we know that x is equal to negative 2. So now that we know that x is equal to negative 2, we could plug negative uh, 2 in for x in either one of these equations. Uh, always just go with the easier one. Obviously, this one's going to be easy. Easier to figure out, so this first equation is y equals, instead of x, we're going to put in negative 2 plus 4. Uh, so now we just have to simplify here. Uh, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2, so our x here is going to be negative 2, and our y is 2. Whenever you write it in an ordered pair, you always write the x first, so c is going to be our answer. Now let's say you totally forgot how to use the substitution method. You could use the elimination method here, but that's going to be a little complicated as well. So here's the hack I was telling you about, where whenever you have multiple choice algebra, uh, you can use this. All it requires is knowing how to replace the letters with the numbers. So let's uh, start with this first for A, and we are going to replace uh, x with 1, and y with negative 5. So we have negative 5 uh, equals uh, it says x is 1 plus 4. Well, 1 plus 4 is 5, and here it says negative 5, so we automatically know a is not our answer. Uh, when you replace your letters in the equation with the possible answers, uh, if it comes out with a true statement, that's how you know it's the right answer. Well, here is negative 5 equals positive 5, and that's just not true. So we know A is not the answer. Well, let's go down to B. Uh, it says Y is negative 7 equals negative 2 uh, plus 4. 
So again, negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. So does negative 7 equal positive 2? No, it certainly does not. So we know B is not the answer. So let's move down to C. Now, we already know C is the answer because, one, we solved it uh, using substitution, and two, we also know uh, that it's the only answer left. We already eliminated A and B, but let's go ahead and just use uh, this to uh, plug into here. So uh, we have 2 equals negative 2 plus 4. Well, negative 2 plus 4 is 2, so 2 equals 2. Uh, you gotta, it has to work for both equations, so uh, let's go 2 for y equals, uh, if x is negative 2, well, negative 2 times 6 is negative 12 plus 14, and 14 plus negative 12 is 2. So that's how we would know that c was actually the answer. All right, moving on to our next one here. Uh, 3x plus 4y equals 17, y equals negative 4. So again, we see the y equals part, so we know we should be using substitution to answer this problem. So since y equals negative 4 plus 14, we could replace y in this first equation with negative 4x plus 14. So uh, we have 3x plus 4, and again, instead of writing y, we're going to write what y equals, negative 4x plus 14. And that's going to equal 17. So first thing we have to do is distribute here. So we have 3x, uh, 4 times 4x is minus 16x, and 4 times 14 equals 56. So plus 56 equals 17. So first thing we have to do is we have to combine like terms here. So, so 3 and negative 16 give us negative 13x plus 56 equals 17. We now have to subtract 56 from both sides. And 17 minus 56 is negative 39. So negative 13 equals negative 39. Sorry, negative 13x. Now we'll divide both sides by negative 13. And we will find out that x equals negative 39 divided by negative 13 is positive 3. Now again, since this is multiple choice, we don't have to go on from here uh, because the only choice that has 3 as uh, possible for x is a. So we know a is our answer. If we didn't know a was our answer, if b, c, or d had a 3 for x, then we would have to go on and we would just have to plug in 3 for x in one of our equations. So let's just go ahead and do that. So y here equals negative 4 times x. We said x was 3, so that's negative 12 plus 14, and negative 12 plus 14 is 2. So now we know y equals 2. We already knew that, but that is how, if you didn't already know that because of the choices, uh, we would be able to figure that out. And again, uh, since this is algebra, we know that we could have just plugged these in for each of the answers. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick on this one as well. Uh, so 3 times 3 for x is 9, plus 2 for y, 8 equals 17. So we see that it works there. Uh, so if y is 2, equals negative 4 times x is uh, 2. Sorry, x is 3. Uh, so negative 4 times 3 is negative 12, plus 14. Again, our answer is 2, so we know that's right. If we were to try these other two, we will find out that we will get uh, incorrect answers or false statements. Uh, 3 times 2 for x is 6, plus uh, if y was 3, uh, 4 times y, 4 times 3 is 12. That would give us 18, so we already know that's not right because it's supposed to equal 17. Uh, if we tried this other one, uh, again, we should immediately know that that can't be right because 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and that would actually give us negative 
17. So we know uh, B and C definitely are not correct just by plugging them in there and seeing that we got a uh, false statement. So A would have to be our answer here. All right, for number three here, uh, we are going to want to use the elimination method. Uh, we don't have X or Y isolated by itself. Um, and it wouldn't be too easy to get either one isolated by themselves. So the easiest way here would be the elimination method. However, we have negative 3x and 4x. Uh, we have 7y and 3y. So neither of these uh, are going to be eliminated easily. So we're going to have to do what we did yesterday. And we are going to have to multiply both of these equations by something uh, to get them to cancel out. So let's go ahead and cancel out our x's. Uh, between 3 and 4, the lowest common denominator is 12. Both 4 and 3 go into 12. So we're going to want one of these to be negative 12x and one of these to be positive 12x. Well, the first one we are going to want uh, positive 12x. Sorry, for the first one we're going to want negative 12x. So we need to multiply both sides of this equation by 4. So if we multiply both sides by 4, that will give us negative 12x uh, plus 28y equals 8 times 4 is 32. For our second equation, we're going to want to make it positive 12x. So we're going to multiply this whole equation by Three. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it and write what the answer would be over here. So 3 times 4x is positive 12x. Uh, 3 times 3y is 9y. And then 14 times 3 is 42. All right, so here our x's are going to cancel out because one is positive 12, one is negative 12. Our y's are going 28 plus 9 is 37y. And then 74, when 32 plus 42 is 74, uh, divide both sides by 37, and we figure out that y here equals 2. Uh, again, just like the last one, the only possible y equals 2 is a, so we know a is going to be our answer. Uh, but if we didn't, we would have to plug this uh, 2 back into one of our equations. So two, uh, that gives us negative 3x plus 7 times 2 is 14 equals 8. Subtract 14 from both sides. And we get negative 3x equals 8 minus 14 is negative 6, and divide both sides by negative 3, and we get that x is going to equal 2. Again, we already knew that, but that is how you would figure that out. Now, this particular problem is really good place for that hack uh, to come into play here, uh, because with this particular uh, method of elimination where we have to multiply both equations by a number to get something to be eliminated uh, is kind of a long way to do things. So we can shorten that up by just going through and adding uh, each of these. Now we already know A is the answer, so let's go with these uh, false answers first. Uh, so B, if X was negative 2 and Y was 1, that would give us uh, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Uh, 1 times 7 is 7, and 6 plus 7, does it equal 8 like it's supposed to here? No, 6 plus 7 equals 13, so that immediately tells us that B is not our answer. Uh, if we take a look at C, let's plug in negative 2 uh, for X, and that would give us 6. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, and negative 2 uh, time, or negative 1 times 7 is negative 7, and does that equal 8? No, it does not. Um, so you can see there in about 30 seconds, I already eliminated that B and C are definitely not the answer. Uh, if we tried to figure out A, then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and 2 times 7 is 14, and does that equal 8? Yes, it does. So 
the easy, quick way to figure out whenever you have multiple choice algebra, um, just whatever the possible answer choice is, uh, plug it into for your variables, and then you can figure out what the answer is without even having to do the substitution or the elimination. All right, for number four here, it gives us a little bit of a story problem. I, I kind of cut off the, the side here, but it says the sum of two numbers is 80, their difference is 20. Write a system of equation that describes the situation, and then it tells you to solve by elimination to find the two numbers. So let's go ahead and do all of that. So the first thing uh, you need to do is know how to set up this problem. Uh, so since it's a story problem here, you just kind of got to read and write out what it says. So sum means that we're adding two things together. So the sum of two numbers is 80. So that means x plus y equals 80. And their difference, that means subtraction, is 20. So that means x minus y equals 20. So uh, looking at these, we already know the answer is either A or D here because uh, those are the only ones that says x plus y is 80 and x minus y is 20. Uh, these two switch it over. No, I guess it could be, oh no, I switched up y minus x. So, uh, it, it's got to be one of these two. Uh, to solve through elimination, we have plus y and minus y, so those are going to be the ones to eliminate when we combine our like terms. Uh, we have x and x, so that gives us 2x equals 80 and 20 is 100. Divide both sides by 2, and that gives us x here is going to equal 50. And uh, if we needed to, so we already know our answer here is going to be D, but if we needed to, we could plug 50 back in, in either of these equations. Uh, so 50 plus Y equals 80. To solve that, you would subtract 50 from both sides and end up with Y equals 30. So does that solve our question here. Uh, the set of two numbers is 80. The, their sum is 80, so 50 plus 30 is 80. Their difference is 20. 50 minus 30 is 20. So that solves our question. All right, so this next question here, it says true or false. The ordered pair 1, negative 3 is a solution to this system. Now we could solve this system using substitution, but this is a perfect uh, opportunity to use our hack. Uh, 1 and negative 3. Since there's only one possible solution, you won't even have to go through a bunch of them. Let's just try plugging 1 and negative 3 in to this equation. So negative 3 is our y, so replace y with negative 3, equals negative 5 times 1 is just negative 5 plus 2. Uh, negative 5 plus 2 is actually negative 3, so it works for the first equation. Uh, try out the second one, so we'll put negative 3 in for y and putting 1 in for x. Uh, negative 3 equals 1 minus 4. 1 minus 4 is negative 3, so this is true. All right, for number 6 here, we need to graph both of these equations. Uh, so here's how we do this. It's been a while since we did this. Uh, so let's go back over it. You, you're going to want to make two lines, and where these two lines cross each other, that is your answer that you're going to write down there. So uh, whenever you're graphing a line, always start with the y-intercept. Uh, make sure you remember. So make sure you remember your slope-intercept form equation. Uh, y equals mx plus b. That is the form that both of these are in. m is going to be your slope. b is your y-intercept. So that means this last number over here, that's your y-intercept. So we could start there. The y-intercept is where the line is going to cross this y-axis. Y-axis is the vertical one, the one that goes up and down. So negative 5 is going to be where our first point is. So put a point there. Make sure you click line before you do it. So I'm just going to reset this. Make sure you click line before you make your first uh, point. It's going to be at negative 5. And then we use our slope to figure out, remember, if it's negative, you're going down. If it's positive, you're going up. And always go to the right. So our slope here is negative 3 over 1. So that means we're going down 3 and right 1. Down 1, 2, 3 and right 1 for a second down. So there is our first line. For our next line, positive 2 is our first line. 
and one over two. So that's a rise of one, a run of two. Uh, since it's positive, we're going up and then always go to the right. So we're going right two. And there is our second line, and we can see where these two lines cross is right here, and that is our answer. Uh, so that's one negative two on the x and one on the y. So negative two on the x and one on the y. So there is our answer. All right, for this next one here, again, it just wants us to solve this system of uh, linear equations. Um, we don't see x, y uh, by itself on one side. Um, it's also nothing is going to eliminate. So neither one of those are really set up for this one. Uh, but honestly, you could use either way to solve this equation. So I'm going to go ahead and give you both ways. There's no multiple choice, so we can't use our hack. But uh, we can use either substitution or elimination to solve this system. So let's go with uh, elimination first. Uh, if we wanted to eliminate our uh, x's here, uh, we would want this to be negative x, a negative 1x, since this one is positive. Uh, so we'll, all we would have to do is multiply this whole second equation by negative 1. Anytime you're multiplying something by negative 1, all you're basically doing is making everything in that equation negative. So it's just going to be negative x minus y equals negative 4. So now we can write this first equation, x plus 3y equals 8. And now we can add our like terms. Our x's will be eliminated. Uh, negative y plus 3 is 2y. And 8 minus 4 is 4. So that means our y here is going to be 2 after we divide both sides by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2, so that means y equals 2. And if we plug that back into our second equation, uh, x plus 2 equals 4. Subtract 2 from both sides. Oops, I don't know why I'm dividing. Subtract 2 from both sides, and we get x also equals 2. So our answer here is 2 and 2. So we used uh, elimination on that one, but we could have used substitution. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how we could have used substitution. First, all you have to do, I said, if you have x or y on one side of the equation, you immediately know substitution is your way to go. Uh, but if you don't have that and you still want to use substitution, uh, you could just do a little uh, equation manipulation here and get it to how you want it. Uh, so let's say we want to uh, isolate our y here. All we have to do is subtract x from both sides. And that would leave us with y equals 4 minus x. So now that we know y equals 4 minus x, we can plug that into uh, our first equation for y. So we'll end up with x equals 3, uh, sorry, I'm tapping it down wrong. So x, we have x plus 3 times 4 minus x equals 8. And so now we have to distribute. We have x plus 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times the negative x is minus 3x. Combine our like terms. Uh, x and negative 3x is negative 2x plus 12 equals 8. We could subtract 12 from both sides. And we will end up with, those will cancel out and write it over here because I'm running out of room, uh, negative 2x equals negative 4, divide both sides by negative 2, and we find out that x equals 2. And again, we would just have to plug that back into this equation, uh, x equals 2, and to find out that y also here equals 2. Our answer here in the ordered pair will be 2, comma, 2. All right, now we have some uh, fun story problems. Um, again, I, I didn't foresee this. I ended up cutting off some of the problems, but I'll go ahead and read it to you. Um, it says you have 60 minutes to exercise at the gym. The elliptical burns 9 calories per minute, while the treadmill burns 8 calories per minute. You want to burn 500 calories using both machines. How much time should you spend on each machine? Now, this almost seems like impossible to figure out if you just read it uh, without knowing how 
to use our methods. Well, the first thing you have to do is just simply set up this equation. So first thing you have to do uh, is just give your different options uh, variables. You could give them X and Y, you could give them any letters in the world. So let's call them T for treadmill and E for elliptical. So the time on you spend on the treadmill and the total minutes you spend on the elliptical together are going to equal 60. So here's our first equation, T plus E equals 60. Now, the second thing that we know is that the elliptical burns nine calories per minute. Well, we said E is for the minutes spent on the elliptical. And for every minute, you burn nine calories. Uh, for every minute on the treadmill, you burn eight calories. So that means eight T plus nine E, we want that to equal 500. So now we have our equation set up, and again, you could use either the substitution method or the uh, elimination method to solve this problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, elimination method. Uh, so if we want to eliminate our t's here, uh, we would need this top number to be negative 8 t's. So what we're going to do is multiply both sides by negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and write my answer down under here. Uh, negative 8 times t is negative 8t. So now you can see those will cancel each other out. Uh, negative 8 times e is negative 8e. And 60 times 8 is going to be negative 480. All right, now we're going to combine our like terms. Again, our t's are going to be eliminated here. Uh, and so 9e minus 8e is just going to leave us with e equals 500 minus 480 is 20. So our time spent on the elliptical is going to be 20 minutes. Now we can plug it back into either one of these equations. Obviously, this first one is going to be easier. Just t plus e equals 60. So that means t plus 20 equals 60. And subtract 20 from both sides. And we find out that T here is going to equal 40. So the time spent on the treadmill is 40. And the time spent on the elliptical is going to be 20. All right, so on this one, uh, it's, it's basically the same problem, just a little different. Just another story problem. In this one, it says you have 40 math and science problems for homework. Uh, you have eight more math than science. So let's go ahead and set up a couple of equations. Uh, it says you have 40 total math and science. So we'll call math M and our number of science problems S. So math problems plus science problems is going to be 40. And it also says that you have eight more math problems than science problems. So that means if we took our total math problems minus our total science problems, it would come out to eight. All right, so this one is already set up perfectly for the elimination method. Uh, we have plus s and minus s. So if we add all of our like terms together, these will be eliminated. m and m uh, give us 2m equals 48, uh, divide both sides by 2, and we end up with m equals 48 divided by 2 is 24. So that means there are 24 math problems, and again, plug 24 in for m in either one of these. Uh, so 24 plus what equals 40, uh, there would be 16 science problems. So 24 and 16 would be our answers here. Again, you could just use these to check it out, make sure it's right. Uh, you have 40 total problems, well, we have 24 and 16 science, 24 plus 16 is 40. And then we have 8 more math than science. So if we have 24 math and 16 science, there are 8 more math problems, so we know we are correct. All right, for this last one here, um, we are going to use the uh, substitution method. Um, first thing we have to do is just solve for x in this first equation. So when there's not even a y 
in one of the equations, it makes it a lot easier to solve. All you have to do is the one without the y, solve it for x, and then plug that back into the other equation to solve for y. So we have negative 2x equals negative 20. So we need to divide both sides here by negative 2. And we find out that <clears throat> x equals negative 20 divided by negative 2 is positive 10. So x equals 10. Once we know that x equals 10, we can plug that over into our second equation. Instead of x, we're going to write 10 plus 5y equals 35. So to solve here, we're going to subtract 10 from both sides. Those cancel out, leaving us 5y equals 35 minus 10 is 25. Divide both sides by 5. And y equals 25 divided by 5 is 5. So x here is going to be 10, and y is going to be 5. So 10 comma 5 is going to be our answer. All right, so that is it for this uh, assignment. Uh, make sure you are ready for your quiz that you're going to be taking tomorrow. Um, sorry, this was kind of a long video, but I did want to show you every possible way to solve uh, any of these. Uh, just so you know that when it comes to the substitution method or the elimination method, you really could use either one on any of these problems. It's just a matter of which one's going to be easier. Uh, so it's good that you understand both of them. Now, if you understand one way more than the other, then just use that one. You'll come to the right answer. It just might take a little longer to get there. Also, I wanted to make sure I showed you that uh, multiple choice algebra hack that you could use, and I hope you do use it uh, in this class, on the final for this class, when you take um, your I-STEP or your I-LEARN, whatever they're calling it at the time, or when you go on to take your SAT or any other ASVAB, any other standardized test, if there's multiple choice algebra, that is the way to go. It's usually the easiest way to solve anything. Just whatever possible answer they give you, plug those into the equation, and you will see if that is right or not. All right, so that is the end of this video. I will see you all in the next one.